Hey guys, Brennan Mejia here. So today's video, we're gonna talk about my top 10 favorite Power Rangers from across the entire franchise. Who made the list? Who didn't? Did anyone from Dino Charge make the list? Because that's my own season. Did I even make the list? You'll have to wait and find out, but until then, let's start with number 10, Kimberly the Pink Ranger from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Kimberly is the original pink Power Ranger, and the reason she makes my top 10 is because of her gymnastics ability. So a lot of people think I did gymnastics myself because I have a circus background. So it was that acrobatic connection, even though I'm not a gymnast, their skills cross over, so I know how difficult that training can be. And so seeing her actively do gymnastics on the show, on the balance beam, I remember, she did like a back walkover and some other tricks. I was always super impressed by that. And I loved how in Mighty Morphin, they picked people with different skill sets, but that were all movement based. I mean, you had the gymnast, you had the dancer, you had the actual martial artist and different styles of martial arts. So aside from Kimberly's gymnastics prowess, she also was my first crush, which every convention I go to, Kimberly was like, everyone's first crush who was into Power Rangers. Um, so I also fall into that camp. But it was really her gymnastics ability that made her enter the top 10 list for me. Number nine, Sir Ivan, the Gold Ranger from Power Rangers Dino Charge. Ivan made my top 10 because not only is he the Gold Ranger, but in my series, he has so much power and charisma. When Davi is on screen playing Sir Ivan, you can't take your eyes away from it. And the funny thing is Davi actually auditioned to be the Red Ranger. And so we joke a lot about how he wanted to be the Red Ranger, but in the show, the Gold Ranger is way more talented and powerful to start than the Red Ranger is. But no one else could I see in that role other than Davi. Not only is he super talented as an actor, but he's a very skilled martial artist in real life as well. Super flexible. So whenever they taught him the choreo for fighting, he would add such a cool flair to it that really, even though martial arts doesn't really resonate with the Renaissance era that they were kind of going for with Ivan being a knight, he still made it work. So he would kick in such a way or punch in such a way that still held a grandeur about it with him being this very honorable knight. Sire. I am at your service. But yet very smooth in his movements hand to hand, as well as having that sword. And the way that he came up with like this very kind of way of speaking with Ivan that wasn't really a British accent, but it wasn't quite an American accent. It was just kind of like, ah, oh, yes, I am Ivan, the, the Knight of Xandar. I am Sir Ivan, Knight of Xandar. And it was just so brilliant. And I love his performance. And again, not only is Davi amazing in real life, but Sir Ivan, just the, the power he brings to the team and being able to stand toe to toe with the Red Ranger myself really makes him earn that top nine spot. And I'm not just picking Davi because I know him in real life and it's my own season, but honestly, if you look at him and the ability he brings as the sixth Ranger, well, kind of seventh if you count Miss Morgan or Purple Ranger, we had 10 Rangers, we had a lot of Rangers, but our gold really stood out to me in his performance. I'm curious if you guys think the same. Number eight on my list goes to Zane, the Silver Ranger from Power Rangers In Space. So I really love the aesthetic of the In Space Ranger suits to begin with. As a team, they're probably my favorite suits aside from the Gold Ranger and Zia. That's my favorite, favorite suit. But Zane and his Silver Ranger suit, I mean, I know we're talking about the Rangers, but I also just got to go on a tangent about the suit design. His Silver Ranger suit is probably my second favorite suit in all the Power Rangers. It's just so sleek. Silver was like one of my favorite colors when I was a kid. Being the sixth Ranger and being as far as I recall, the first Silver Ranger, I could be wrong. I mean, it's been a minute since I've watched it, but I, it's the first one that I remember anyway. And just the impact that he made. And I thought his hair was so cool and I wanted to bleach my hair, but I didn't think that'd really go well with my skin tone. So I never did. And I'm kind of glad I didn't. But part of me is like, oh, his hair is blonde and it's super cool blonde and I want to go that. So it's not even, it's more like the impact he had on me with his presence when I was a kid versus like, well, his character did a specific thing that made me like him. The presence that Justin Nemo, the actor who played Zane, had on screen was just amazing to me. I mean, I just, I don't know what it was about him because he's supposed to be an alien too. And I thought that was just so cool. But yeah, just he was incredible to watch and I just love his series. Number seven on my list goes to Amelia, the pink slash red ranger in Power Rangers Dino Fury slash Cosmic Fury. So Amelia makes the seventh spot because she is groundbreaking. Not only was she a pink ranger in Dino Fury, but she became the red ranger and leader of the team in Cosmic Fury. And also Hunter who plays Amelia is super talented. I actually trained with her one time uh, doing an open gym in LA. She came and worked with me and that was before 
Cosmic Fury was filming. So she just had wrapped Dino Fury. And so she was telling me like, she's really excited about something and you know, like under wraps and whatever, but I could kind of guess what was going on. And she could throw tricks not even training regularly that I still can't throw. She did a round off, back full, and I don't know, something about twisting and back fulls just messed with my brain, but she threw it like it was nothing and she could just like bust it out. So whenever, I, I know Power Rangers is just acting, but I always really love when a Power Ranger actor can actually move like Power Rangers do as well to some level. Uh, it just adds a level of authenticity to me. And also when I go to conventions or when I'm walking around and someone recognizes me, so often they're like, can you do a flip or can you do like some kick or something? So I'll do like a handstand or a backflip. And she's one of the few who can actually keep up and do those skills. And that to me resonates and shows its strength on screen. And again, it's not that you have to be able to do these things because Power Rangers at the end of the day is an acting job, not a physical who can tumble and who can't do martial arts job. But if you can move like a gymnast or a cheerleader or a martial artist or a dancer, to me, it shows itself in your performance on screen. And when she played Amelia, I could really see that skill set break through. Number six on my list goes to Jen, the Pink Ranger and Power Rangers Time Force. And I just realized I have a lot of Pink Rangers on this list. I guess they're just really awesome and cast really well. So Jen, played by Aaron Cahill, who is an amazing human being, I loved her performance in Time Force because, okay, so backpedal a little bit. I watched Time Force for the first time while I was living in New Zealand filming Dino Charge. So Yoshi highly recommended Time Force as one of his favorite seasons. So we would film, come back as a cast, because a lot of us lived together in the same house, so those of us that did, would then watch several episodes of Time Force as a group, like, oh, and then some of us got less interested, but I stayed with it and watched all of Time Force really, really quickly. And Jen, being a Pink Ranger, I mean, I know typically Power Rangers gives the leader role to the Red Ranger, but as far as I'm concerned in Time Force, she was the leader. I mean, she came from in the future and she kind of bossed around West, the Red Ranger, and she was just so not about the nonsense. She was like, this is the mission. This is what needs to happen. We need to save people because blah, 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 X, Y, Z. And I just love the energy she brought. And I mean, she's such a sweet, kind-hearted human, but the way she plays Jen, not that Jen isn't kind, but she's you know basically a soldier for all intents and purposes, and she's protecting the timeline. And she takes that job very seriously because it's the fate of the world, right? And so I just loved her performance and the strength that she brought to the team. So that's why Jen makes number six. Okay guys, we are hitting the halfway point on the list. Am I gonna make my own list? Who knows? Stay tuned to find out. So number five on my list goes to Billy, the Blue Ranger in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So the reason I love Billy so much played by David Yost is A, blue is my favorite color. I know I'm the Red Ranger. Okay, I can like other colors, okay? Back off. Uh -huh. But also I love the fact that he used his brain. Because at the time when Mighty Morphin came out, I know a lot of people know me for my athleticism nowadays because like I work out a lot and do circus and stuff. But at the time, I was very non-athletic. I used to get tired going up my stairs. Like, no joke, when I was a kid, wasn't into it. I'd play video games so long, my elbows would hurt from holding the controller in this position. Nowadays, I found a nice balance, but at that time, it was really cool seeing a ranger who wasn't like the athletic super martial arts dude. And I didn't resonate with that at that time. And it's cool because, you know, as we grow as people, our own interests change. But at that time, I was like, oh, someone who's not like super strong and buff, whatever, can be a hero. And Billy used what he had, again, his intellectual prowess to solve problems, to help the Rangers, but he also could fight and stand up for his friends. So I really love David Yost's performance. I thought it was nice and subtle. And you know, when he was thinking, he would come up with some kind of idea, him and Alpha working together in Zordon. You know, heck, they made the white Ranger suit, right? So I just really loved how he would not only have to rely on his fists to save the day. So number four on my list goes to Coda, the caveman Blue Ranger in Power Rangers Dino Charge. Yoshi deserves to be a Power Ranger. I mean, if any human being deserved to be a Ranger, it's Yoshi. And I say that because not only is Yoshi a stuntman, or he was before Power Rangers, like actively working as a stunt guy, like he was a stunt performer, he would actually go on tours and to different events and Comic Cons and appearances as Power Rangers from other seasons. So he was the in suit actor, not on the show itself, but for the meet and greets, which is crazy to me. Like, 
he went from meet and greet Power Ranger to Power Ranger Power Ranger. And literally when we walked out on uh, in our suits at Morphicon, his friends that he used to do the in-suit stuff with, because they had in-suit Rangers there, obviously, because we were there, um, they thought, they didn't realize he was actually the new Ranger. Like he didn't tell them. And so they're looking at him, they're like, bro, you got like an upgrade? You got like a, a new job, like a, a promotion? Because he went from them to now actual Ranger. And Yoshi just not only was he a fan of Power Rangers, but it was one of the things that helped him learn English when he moved here from Indonesia. He would watch Power Rangers and the in-suit actor thing to being a Ranger was super cool. And then also he knew all the poses. Like on set, if we were supposed to hit like, you know, my T-Rex, whatever from the Sentai, he knew it. He knew our Pink Rangers, he knew all of our Rangers poses because he loved learning the choreography. So I just thought his, his brain with Mighty Morphin through Kyo Ruger, Super Sentai as well, was so exhaustively expansive that he could help us even if we didn't have our stunt team on set because if we were on first unit and we had to hit a pose, he would like, okay, yeah, move your fist more like this because I was trained in actual fighting like Krav Maga and Judo and stuff, but he was trained in what we jokingly call cinema foo, which is like Kung Fu, but like cinema version. And fighting for camera is not the same as fighting in real life. In real life, you know, you throw a punch and you come back and you cover your face. For camera, you wanna leave your face open, right? So like camera can see your face on purpose because it looks cooler when you're fighting and you can get that emotional expression. But in real life, you're like, I don't wanna leave my face open because someone can, you know, punch you. And so I had to like unlearn real fighting and he was always there to help me. He's like, no, no, lower your fist a little bit, hit this pose, hit this stance. So I, he made the entire show better with his knowledge of Super Sentai and Power Rangers. So as amazing as Yoshi is, let's get into his character, Koda. Now Koda in the show, in Dino Charge, he is a caveman who was frozen, I think it was like 100,000 years. Correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a minute since I've seen it. But he got saved by his Energem. So he had a brother named Taku that his character saves and tackles out of the way, but his Energem, when he bonds to it, it keeps him alive even though he's been frozen for 100,000 years. His character doesn't know basically how to live in modern day. And just seeing his performance of being so heartfelt because Koda is very, you know, leads not with words because he can't speak English too well. Apparently I can't either. He doesn't speak English very well, <laughs> um, but he has a big heart. And so when he wants to help people, it's always for the right reason or for food, which could be the right reason. Um, his character is always hungry and super strong. And even though it's not like a power necessarily from his Energem, it's just that he's a caveman, so he's super strong. And Yoshi just played that character so well. He is so heartfelt. When I do conventions, a lot of the times kids will come up to me and they're like, the blue one's my favorite. I love the caveman. And he just nailed it, that performance. All right, guys, we've made it to the final three. Number three on my list goes to Adam, the Black Ranger in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So Adam is the second Black Ranger after Zack leaves to go to like a World Peace Conference. When I watched the Mighty Morphin movie where they fought against uh, Ivan Ooze, and I just loved his line when they become like the Ninja Rangers for a minute, when they lose their powers, and he's looking all forlorn, and then, you know, the, the mentor character is like, what's wrong? And he's like, I'm a frog. Adam, what's wrong? I'm a frog. And I just, the way he said that line, he was so sad because, you know, like, you got all these people like, you're the eagle and you're the blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I'm a frog. And the frog though, I mean, I remember watching in some of the episodes, like the tongue could wrap around. If I recall, like little bombs would come off the tongue. I think that was Power Rangers. If I'm mixing it with something else, forgive me, but that's what my brain thinks it is. And Adam also, I believe, became a Green Ranger, right? And uh, was it Zeo that he was green? Um, yeah, so, uh, and then he came back in a reunion episode later and his morpher was broken. And it was like, if he used it, something bad could happen potentially. And Alpha, I think, was warning him not to morph. And he did it anyway, because it's for the greater good and had to help everyone, even at the expense of his own safety, like a good superhero. So yeah, Adam makes the number three list because he's a boss. All right, guys, we're down to the final Two, number two on my list goes to none other than the original Green Ranger, Tommy in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Now, it doesn't do Tommy justice to just speak about him as the Green Ranger on account then he was then a White Ranger, and then he was a Red Ranger, and then I think he was a Black Ranger, and then if you're counting Draken, he was whatever the heck Draken was Ranger too, which was white slash green kind of mix, but evil. Anyway, Tommy is 
a legend and he played so many legendary ranger colors but that green ranger when i saw the dragon sword for the first time and how he could play a flute through a helmet which i still don't understand but it worked and he did it i never questioned it as a kid until someone pointed it out as an adult and i'm like even as an adult that still doesn't break the magic because if anyone could play through a helmet it was tommy what are we gonna do now i just remembered i left the oven on and the dragon sword being like Godzilla, but like Mecha Godzilla, but better than Mecha Godzilla in a way, and like shooting little missiles out of its fingers. The fact that not only did he take out the entire Mighty Morphin team when he was evil and kicked them all out of the Megazords, and that caused like trauma to every kid. They're like, no, my team's getting beat up by this one dude. But then when he joined the team, and then he was able to help the other Rangers by giving his shield as a source of power, then we're getting into the idea of like, you know, two Pokemon fusing to become a stronger Pokemon. And that's what it kind of reminded me of. Or like, you know, Megazord, like swapping out pieces. So like, we need the Green Ranger piece to add on to the Black Ranger piece. And then he could do that. And he did. And it was awesome. And then when he got to become the White Ranger, and I love the Tiger Zord. I used to pretend as a kid running up the stairs on all fours that I was the White Tiger Zord. And then he got the Falcon Zord. I mean, his Zords were legit. Those three alone are some of my favorite. I had the honor of meeting uh, Jason David Frank, may he rest in peace, uh, a couple different times at different conventions. And the first time I met him was at San Diego Comic-Con when they were doing like promotion for Beast Morphers. It was at like a breakfast or something that Hasbro was putting on. And I introduced myself to Jason and I was like, hi, Jason, I'm also a Power Ranger from this. And you know, he could totally ignore me. He's like the Ranger, I'm just a Ranger. And he's like, oh, nice to meet you. And then he, he's like, let's take a picture together with the Beast Morpher cast. So I have a photo where he like set up how he wanted it to look. And you see us all lined up in some epic pose with the in-suit Rangers and then him and I. And then I was like, oh, so I have an album in my phone where I do a handstand on every Power Ranger I meet. Would you be okay if I do a handstand on you? And again, first time meeting this guy. And he's like, oh yeah, that's fine. And so he let me do a handstand on him. So obviously for so many reasons, Tommy is absolutely phenomenal. He is a legend. He is probably the most well-known Ranger if you ask anyone, they're like, oh, Power Rangers? Yeah, they think of like Tommy, right? So that's why Tommy is number two on my list. All right, guys, we've made it to number one in my esteemed top 10 Ranger list. And that honored spot goes to none other than Tyler Navarro, the Red Ranger and Power Rangers Dino. I'm just kidding, guys. Don't worry about it. No, I'm not putting myself at number one. I mean, I could in another list, but no, number one actually goes to West, the Red Ranger and Power Rangers Time Force. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, Yoshi had our cast watch or recommended that we watch Power Rangers Time Force while we were filming Dino Charge in New Zealand. And I just clicked with the energy that Jason Font brought to Wes's performance. And I actually had a journal that I was writing because uh, one of my acting coaches talked to me a lot about having backstory for your characters. You know, that it's important to not only have what's on the page, but have depth, like what makes your character act the way they do or speak the way they do or move the way they do or think the way they do. And now I also wanted to have different personalities to pull from that were strong, heroic type characters. So Tom Welling, his performance in Smallville was someone I pulled from because that was a big influence on my life when I was younger. I loved Tom Welling. But one of the other people I wrote in that journal that I wanted Tyler's energy to be similar to was Wes or Jason Font's performance in Time Force. So if you go back and watch Time Force and Dino Charge, let me know if you can pick up on some of the energy similarities. I wasn't trying to copy anyone's performance, but it influenced how I wanted Tyler to be played. And so Wes, you know, at first he was kind of reluctant. He was like the son of a wealthy person. He wasn't really into like the whole Power Ranger thing at first, but then he steps up to the plate when he needs to, you know, when he, and he also played two people. He played his ancestor in the future, and then he got to play himself in present, and then his thing with Jen back and forth going in time, it was just, I just thought Time Force was so well done and he did such a, an amazing job playing that role. And I've got to meet him multiple times at different conventions and he always gives me wisdom if I have any questions about um, you know, career advice or conventions or just life advice. You know, even being a dad now, he you know tells me like, you know, work will always be there when you need it, but spend time with your family, it matters more. And like, just things that a lot of people will be like, yeah, you know, go after that money. And he's like, no, like family, man. One of my favorite episodes with Wes is, I believe, was it the finale where him and Dan Southworth, who played the Quantum Ranger, were like in the clock tower and like they got, you know, basically at the end of every season of Power Rangers, their base gets destroyed. And so it's getting flooded by monsters and they have like a, 
two on million bad guy henchmen fight. And I just love that scene. Um, but aside from that, just his energy throughout each episode and his reaction and interaction with his cast members and just how authentic it felt. Cause he was like a happy guy, you know, but it was still grounded in reality. And I think a lot of people, they look at Power Rangers and they're like, it's such a campy show and it's so unbelievable. The circumstances are unbelievable versus reality, but it's still, if you have a good actor in the role, they still make it believable if that was actually happening to them. And that's what I think he did really well. Even though it was extraordinary circumstances, I was still able to believe that it was actually occurring to his character. So I know I didn't put my own Red Ranger in my list of top 10 favorite Power Rangers, but I'm curious, where would you put Tyler? Would he make your own top 10? And speaking of lists, watch me react to Watch Mojo's top 20 Red Rangers and see where I rank.